Welcome to the Glory Road Television Show. I'm your host, Dr. Candace Smithman, and today is a beautiful day in the Lord, and I have with me the amazing Karen Wheaton. She is the founder and senior leader of The Ramp, um, which is in Hamilton, Alabama. She is an author. She is a speaker. She has the Ramp School of Ministry and the Ramp Church. Um, I can remember watching Karen years and years ago on Trinity Broadcasting Network when I was growing up in the Lord, and they had her on all the time talking about the amazing work that she was doing with youth and young adults. And so it is just a pleasure and an honor to have her here with us today. And so, Karen, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Dr. Candice. It's wonderful to be with you. Well, we're going to have an amazing show because you authored a brand new book called Watching the Road, Praying Your Prodigal Home. And you have an amazing story. And I want us to start out the interview today sharing your story because I know there's many uh, mothers and fathers out there who are going to be encouraged by this broadcast because um, you experienced just some amazing um, just messages from the Lord, he healing and connection from the Lord when it came to your daughter, Lindsay. And so we want to bring hope and healing and encouragement to those moms and dads that are watching today that may have a prodigal. So please share your story with us. Well, I love to share this story because it is a message of hope to people that are believing for the return of someone they love. You know, I was, uh, I have two daughters. My oldest daughter is Lauren. My youngest daughter is Lindsay. They were both raised in the ministry their whole lives. I mean, I carried them in my womb ministering on platforms. So they've known nothing but the presence of God, nothing but church their whole lives. So we began the ramp together in uh, 1998. And they were just part of the DNA of that vision of working together in the ramp. They both fell in love with young men from this area and whose lives were changed at the ramp. Uh, Lauren married a great man of God that's still involved with the ministry. Lindsay married Casey Doss, who became the pastor of the ramp, the, the director of our school of ministry. Lindsay was over the performing arts department of Okay, it looks like we're having a little bit of technical difficulty here. Hold on just a minute. Karen's going to come back. I know that she is. We've been having a few internet connection uh, connection issues this morning. So um, she's going to come back on and share more with you about her book. I know she'll be back on in a couple minutes, but here is her book, Watching the Road, Praying Your Prodigal Home. You want to have the opportunity to get this book. Um, because it is an amazing resource. There she is. Okay, Karen. <laughs> We're trying, Candace. I'm so sorry. We're. I just know that God must be up to something great today. He is. He and is. nothing is going to stop that in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to give my story and let them work on the technical stuff. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds but good. My daughter, Lindsay, was just targeted by the enemy to really destroy her life. And uh, it was little by little. We begin to notice subtle changes in Lindsay. And I, I'm sure that many of your viewers right now maybe relate to what it feels like to see someone you love just turn into someone you've never known in your life. Yes. I mean, just like a different person. Mm -hmm. In fact, during that season, there were times I looked at Lindsay and just said, who are you? Because this girl who's always been loves God, loves her family, loves the ministry is just subtly changing changing uh, the way she dresses, changing the people she's hanging with. She's a mother of two children, a wife, a mother, a minister, but she wants to hang with the single kids more than her family. She wants to, her music changes. Everything about her personality begins to be different. So in, in the spring of 2014, she came and informed all of us that she was leaving her husband, Casey, filing for divorce. She was leaving the ministry. She moved to a different city. It just became a different person. So it was in that season of my life, I had to make some of the greatest decisions I've ever made about whether, because people were telling me, concerned about me and the trauma of it all, you're going to have to accept this and move on with your life. Uh, and somehow just accept the fact that she's an adult and you can't control her. And I had to determine in my mind and in my spirit, is that what I'm going to do? I'm just going to sit down and allow the enemy to wreak havoc in my home, take mm -hmm. my daughter's life and bring destruction mm -hmm. to her life. And I have no power in that. 
So that was one choice or the other choice was I could go to the God I've known my whole life and determine his word on this matter and stand in this place until my daughter and her situation looked like the word God gave me. And I chose the latter. I determined I am standing until. And Candace, that decision resulted in the greatest miracle I have ever personally witnessed in my life. After 40 years of ministry, I mm -hmm. saw what looked like the dead raised. Wow. That, that is, is an, an amazing, amazing story. story. What, what great what? encouragement for those people who are watching today. I had a similar situation um, happen with my oldest daughter as well. And it was very, very uh, tragic for us and for us as a family. And um, But you know what? I, this story is about what, what God has spoken to you, but I want you to know I'm in agreement with you. God brought my daughter back and um, she, I mean, she, <laughs> she's a powerhouse for the Lord, but I literally had to lay her and her husband on the altar of the Lord and say, God, you resurrect this thing because you're the only one that can do it. And he did. He resurrected uh, my oldest daughter and, um, and my son-in-law's marriage and they are they worked through their issues they are they're they're pressing in and moving forward but it was prayer it was intercession and it was laying them down on the altar and saying god only you can resurrect this only you can do that so i am with you on that for sure well i found that god i've known this my whole life but i lived it out truly he answers prayer i love something john wesley says and it's, he said it, it was powerful. God does nothing in the earth except in response to prayer. Mm -hmm. And I learned that because my for two years, my world shut down as I determined to give my focus. When, and I still had to live my life, take care of the ministry needs. And of course, I have a husband and other things. But I really set my focus to one thing. And that was to determine to stand in the gap of intercession until I saw the transformation of my daughter. And you're right, Candace. I went to that same altar many times that you went to with your daughter and son-in-law. And I laid my daughter on that same altar. And it's probably the one Abraham experienced. Yeah. Too, you know? But hey, we serve the God of Abraham, don't we? We do. We do. And God is faithful. I mean, we're two testimonies of how God brought our kids back and he redeemed them. And, you know, my daughter and her husband's marriage is stronger now than it ever was before all of the mess that had occurred. It just, it is, it is. And, you know, it's, it's tough. It's tough to watch that. But when there's praying moms that gather together and say no in the name of Jesus, and you got to push back the enemy, you know, he keeps, he keeps pushing in, but we have to say no. And then we have to push back and say, no, it's my prayers that are going to push you away from this situation and are going to release my son and my daughter into the place that they need to be the plan, the purpose, the call, the destiny that God had for them. You knew they had a destiny for Lindsay. I knew he had a destiny for Alexandria and God, he, he was faithful. But in those moments, you can lose your faith. You can say, what the heck is happening? And so it's only through keeping that connection with God that we, we, uh, we hold on. So he saves us in the process of saving them. <laughs> All right. It looks like Karen froze again here. I know she's going to come back, but I'm going to have her talk it about some of the lessons that she learned on this journey of intercession because um, she learned some amazing lessons. So I know she's coming back right here. There, there you are. All right. You know what? If we have to just do that every few minutes, we're, we're just going to do it every few minutes because this is going to happen. God's going to reach somebody's life today and bring them encouragement. So we're not giving up. <laughs> Amen. We are not. I was just letting the viewers know while you were off just for a second that you're going to share with us what's the most important lesson that you learned on this journey of intercession. Well, you know, one of the most important things, there were so many, but one of the most important lessons I learned was that you do not have to just accept anything that is not the will of God for your life. Because that's huge. That was huge for me. Because I'm being told, you've got to let this go. You've got to move on. You know, that was such that that was such a war zone for a while of determining, do I just really just sort of accept that my daughter's an adult and I've just got to learn to be happy without, you know, what I'm wanting? Or can we really believe we do not have to accept anything, not the will of God? Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so important to know the will of God. And the good thing is we can know his will. 
He will speak to us. I love the way he speaks so loud. He speaks so clear and so often, as often as you need him to speak, he will speak. You know, God's God's word is so beautiful that one word from God will be enough to carry you the rest of your life. But he will give you as many words as you need. If you get a word from God and you clearly know you've heard from God and in 30 minutes you feel like you've plummeted, he'll give you another word. He'll give you as many words as you need to hold on to faith because faith comes by hearing that word. So you get that word and that is what determines the will of God. Mm. I love this. I love this, too, that it's it's in it's in um, first John and it says this. This is our confidence that if we pray and ask anything according to his will, we can have whatever we ask. So when we're praying according to his will, when that gives us confidence that we can receive what we're asking for. So that's why when in your prodigal situation, maybe it's a husband or wife or a son or a daughter, mm -hmm. you go to God, you just seek him until you hear him speak. He may speak through this. This is the foundation of how he speaks. That's right. But he will confirm this word. It may come through on a billboard. It may come on a, through a dream. It, he knows your language of how he, how you hear and how you, how you understand. And when it lines up with this word, you can take that word and decree it and determine. Mm -hmm. I don't have to accept this thing. All I've got to accept is what I know to be the will of God. And don't move on it until it looks like God's will. You know, I, I feel the Lord speaking right now. Um, um, to, to some, some people, people that are out there. there and they are doubting and they are questioning. And, you know, I, when you were holding up the word and you were saying you have to declare and decree it, God will illuminate a specific word to you for the family member or the situation that you've got. And that is that powerful word where heaven and earth came together on that word. And when you hold tight to that and you do declare it and decree it, you are going to see the will of God come to pass. And so I just want to speak to somebody right now who's out there listening. God has a word for you, but you You've got to get in that space and you've got to open up his, his word, open up the Bible and sit there with him and say, God, show me what is the word for me that I can hold on to. And then you ruminate on that word. You say it over and over and over again until it calms your soul, until it transforms your soul, until everything in your soul lines up with the spirit of God on the inside of you. And you begin then to believe fully and wholeheartedly. And you're at that place of faith that God will give you what you're asking for. I mean, heaven was beautiful enough to speak to you about it. So if heaven is going to talk to you about it, then heaven is going to produce the result. But what you've got to do is stand firm and stay steadfast on the word, not bending, not going to the right or to the left. And eventually you're going to see it come to pass. I love that. And Candace too, what you're saying is so true and important because we've got to make a big deal out of when God speaks. That's no small thing. You just heard from the creator of the universe. I love what Peter says about God's promises. Peter says his promises are exceedingly great and precious promises. You know, Candace, when God would speak to me, I would take index cards and I would start writing down those promises. And I would just write down each promise on an index card. And my little index card pile got thicker and thicker and thicker. And I would keep those promises in my Bible. And when I'd go to pray, I would take those index cards out and I would use them like a sword. I would just use him like a weapon, decreeing that promise out loud, decreeing that promise out loud because his word is alive. It is powerful. Yes, it is. It is indeed powerful. Okay, Karen will be back in just a second. We're going to fight through this, people. You need to be praying for us. This is powerful. I can feel the anointing moving so strong right where I'm seated. God is going to release your prodigal to you. He is going to release your son and daughter to you, but you have got to stand on the word. Okay, Karen's back. Keep going, Karen. Make the anointing it, is strong. I know. It. I'm not going to even be distracted. The devil's not going to get this. Jesus is glorified in it. Yes. But listen, you take that word and make a big deal out of that word. Do not consider it a small thing. You think you'll forget it. You think you'll remember it. You won't. You'll forget it. So when you write it down, decree it out of your mouth, and use it like a weapon. It is alive. It is powerful. And it's, I love this, Candace. It says God's word will never return void. 
when we speak that word, mm -hmm. oh, let me let me just read you one. Yeah. Oh, my, my, I love this one. Listen to this. I took it literally. I took God's word literally. This one, this promise right here in, um, let's see, I believe it was in, right here it is. It's in Corinthians. And it says this. Well, if I can find it, thank you, Jesus. It says this, that we are God's ambassadors. It says we speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. I took, there it is, 2 Corinthians 5 and 20. It says we are Christ ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. So yeah. I encourage your listeners right now, believing for your loved one. Take that and realize I am God's ambassadors. God is going to pray through me. I would go outside of my front porch and take that word and call Lindsay home. It says we speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. So I'd go out on the front porch and I would just yell to the top of my lungs, Lindsay, come back to God. Even though she lived an hour away, it doesn't matter. His word will not return void. His word's going to go right where she is. It's going to grip her with conviction and awaken her heart. And, and listen, Candace, there were times it seemed like she was getting worse instead of better. I would pray, get a word, it would get worse. Pray, get a word, it would get worse. But don't give up when it gets worse. That just means that that means the enemy's fighting what God is trying to do. And God's yes. going to prevail because the word will not return void. So I encourage your listeners today, go out mm. on your front porch. Call the name mm. of your loved one. Call them back to God. Second Corinthians 5.20. Go out there. You are letting the spirit of God pray through you. Mm. Call their name and call them back to God. Something is going to move in their heart mm. because this is the word of God and it will not return void. In Jesus' mm. name. Oh, oh hallelujah. hallelujah. In, in Jesus', Jesus name. name. You know, you know I, I want you all to really, really listen, listen to this. this. Because this is perfect opportunity for you to take home some practical truth. Karen is giving you some practical truth. This is what she did in order to bring her prodigal home. I did the same thing and that I would cry out to heaven. My husband and I would cry out to heaven for our daughter and, and son-in-law and their marriage. And God brought it back together. But you know, it's because it was God's will. It was God's will for them to stay married. It was God's will for them to be healed. Just as it was God's will for Lindsay to stay married, be healed, return home. And so we're praying in the will of God. And as accordance with second Corinthians chapter five, verse 20. Yes, God will hear when you're praying for his people to come home. And I know there's many of you today that are watching and you have family members, you have friends, you have people that you love dearly and you're the intercessor. You're the voice that God is using to cry out to heaven, to bring into alignment them to be in that, that place and purpose with God. He needs some people to cry out. Let's talk about that, Karen. Let's talk about how how um, God gave you, uh, what are some additional words that God gave you since we're getting really, really practical? What are some other things he shared with you or some other things you did? I, I know you mentioned in the book that you fasted during this time too. Let's talk a little bit about that. Well, prayer and fasting is a powerful combination. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I share even in my book, fasting is not my favorite thing to do. <laughs> you know, I don't know many people that may, that it is, but listen, all I can tell you is that it works. For some reason, when we shut down those desires of our flesh and we tune in, it's like you just break into a frequency of heaven. Fasting, for some reason, opens up the frequencies of heaven that you can just hear God more clearly. And, and you're right. In Whenever I was in that season, I determined and I would say to my flesh, I want God more than I want this food. I want to hear from God more than I want this food mm -hmm. and that, and you have to tell your flesh that over and over because your flesh, you know, it can be loud. Okay, folks, she's going to come back in just a minute, but listen, I'm going to follow up with that. Here's a very, very important thing. Um, when we're talking about fasting, yes, fasting is indeed difficult. However, Yes. Um, even when fasting is difficult, we still have to have that persistence. That's what I love about you, Karen. And even in myself, I don't quit 
When God says, keep going, I keep going. And so praying and fasting is, and, and, uh, is that kind of that cord that pulls together. Praying, fasting, giving, all three of them together um, creates this threefold cord that enables us to have our whole being in faith. And so we're standing at that place in faith and we know heaven is moving. Heaven is shifting because we're doing those three things. We're praying, we're fasting, and we're giving. And so together, that's like faith in action. When you do those actions, you're putting your faith in action. And so um, it's that. really, really important because I think people will give up too easy. Don't give up. Don't give up easily. See, the enemy knows if you're going to give up easy, but then he knows the people that will not give up. They'll just keep on doing the same thing over and over and over again. Those are the ones he doesn't like because they remain consistent in their behavior and their beliefs. And they're also the ones that see the fruit. I love that. And if you read in, in Luke 18 and in Luke 11, when Jesus teaches us how to pray, what, what examples does he gives us, give us? He gives us people that won't quit. A widow that would not stop petitioning an unjust judge for justice and a person, a man that won't stop knocking on the door. He will not stop. That's how Jesus said, I want you to pray. And listen, I know when you've been hurt so much, so often, and even hurt by hope, because I remember Candace and you probably do too. There were days I would think, oh, I get a word from God. This is it. She's coming home. And she would say something horrific to me. Yes. Or the situation would get so much worse. And after hope has been thrown down so many times, mm -hmm. you build a wall because you think, I don't, I don't want to hurt like this anymore. And you're almost afraid to hope, you know, because hope can hurt. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is if you throw away your hope, you throw away your faith, because faith is the substance of things hoped for. And you just say, God, I determine in you, my hope is in you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to look. At these circumstances. And yes, I'm hurting by what she just said to me. There were days Lindsay said things to me that hurt so bad. I've never cried that hard in my life. Mm -hmm. And you just, it, it, the pain is terrible. But you just take the pain to God and say, God, my hope is not in her. My hope is in you. My hope is in you. That you are going to change her heart. And just mm -hmm. be determined. Determined. Make up your mind. I will not stop until I see the manifestation. Mm, I love that. I will not stop until I see the manifestation. And, and you know what? In prayer, we learn in prayer that it's God increases our ability not to stop through us coming to him and praying and fasting. He gives us supernatural strength to keep fighting in that kind of journey. Just like you said, you lose your hope. And then you were like, oh my gosh, but then he would fill you back up again. No, keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. And God will do the same for you. All you have to do is seek his face. Just seek the throne. Come with confidence. He has taken care of everything for you and he's given you the Holy Spirit. And I know you shared this in your book too. John chapter 14 verses 16 and 17 where the Holy Spirit is our helper. He is the one that has come to help us and he will give us the words. Um, in, in John 14, 16 through 17, it says the spirit of truth um, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him for he dwells with you and he will be in you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance of all things that I said to you. So we know it is the Holy Spirit. He's the one that gives us the strength and he's the one that gives us, gives us uh, the illumination of that word so we can hold on to that word and then step into uh, just pressing pressing the enemy, you press the enemy back, fight the enemy, push him back with those prayers. And, and the more we do that, the more we're going to see the results eventually happen if we do not quit. If we do not quit. And I love the Holy Spirit that he is our helper like that, Candace. I mean, there were times I did. I got to where I couldn't even pray. There were some days I felt like I don't have the strength to pray. Holy Spirit, you're going to have to just pray through me. And he is so sweet in those days to just give us when we, when we run out of words to speak, the Bible says with groaning and with intercession, with groanings that cannot be uttered. He even understands the groan of our spirit. He understands the cry of our spirit. And, and I think he knows in our heart when you're just saying, Lord, I don't even know what to say anymore. I just know I'm not going to give up. I'm just not going to give up, even though it looks so hopeless. 
Did you ever have anybody join you in intercession for Lindsay um, or two or more come in agreement? Did you, um, obviously people knew what was going on, but did you have some type of um, a, a personal prayer friend, intercessor friend that you went to, somebody that you connected with? I can see that it's frozen. So Karen's going to come back, but I think that that's really, really important for us to realize that um, there's prayer in agreement. And in Matthew chapter 18 and 19, the word says, um, if two or more of you agree on earth concerning anything that you ask, it will be done for you by my, by my father in heaven. And so Karen, we were just, I was just wondering if you had um, some prayer partners, some people that came alongside you in this. Well, and that's so important. Jesus meant it when he said, if two agree, it's because of the power of agreement. So I had a dear friend named Pam Barnett. She was my agreeer. <laughs> she was my prayer partner, along with many other friends of mine, too, that were here in the ramp community. And uh, of course, my mother. But uh, it's so important to have that person that can agree with you and not be moved by what they see either. Oh. Pam, you know, was not moved by what we were seeing. And I was I was telling her everything that was happening, but she wasn't moved by what we were hearing or what we were seeing. Mm -hmm. And you need that some days. There were some days when I couldn't. I just felt like I was so drained. I couldn't even hardly pray. And I would just call her and she would just read to me the promises I'd received. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I felt like I just was at my end, she was the one saying, we're not giving up. Well, here's what God said. Here's what God said. So we need those people in our life. Find that kind of a person that will agree with you. And as my, as my mother, my mother is a powerful woman of God. I love what mother says. Mom says, you know what? When I can't find anybody to agree with me, I just say out loud, Holy Ghost, I agree with you. Because if you are watching right now and there's no one in your life that has faith with you, well, then you are still not alone because the, you can just say out loud, Holy Ghost, you're with me. And you can be my prayer partner. I agree with you. And then and then say, Holy Spirit, mm. send me somebody. You know, and in mm. the meantime, while you're waiting on them, you've got Candace and you got me. So here we are, you and Candace and me. We're three right here with the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. But that is very important to get prayer partners. You know what? I love what you said though. You had a partner that could see into the spiritual realm like you and could hold on to the truth even when the circumstances were saying something entirely different and that's the beauty and the blessing of having a strong intercessory partner is they're going to pray the will of god beyond the circumstance and what's seen and and i think sometimes we can choose prayer partners but they don't have the level of faith that we have and so after so many weeks they'll say well i guess it's not working out for you oh well no 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 uh-uh Go to some mature people, um, go to your intercessory prayer leader at your church, whatever it is, but go to the people that can say, no, I see with you and we're going to stand together on this because it can be very defeating if you grab a hold of somebody whose faith is limited and they see from a limited perspective, they're going to be a part of seeing the miracle later. But what you need is some others to come alongside you that can see and stand. And if you're seeing it, if you, the person that is grieving and going through the difficulty can see it and you can communicate that to somebody and they can believe it and hold on to it and join you there. And you can just say to them, listen, where I'm at is where you need to be. Okay. Don't be going anywhere else, but I see it. I need to be, I need you to be with me. They are not in any other place. And that'll help teach and train some people too, to come alongside you and not to talk negatively and not to talk from that lack of faith perspective, because people, we have to be thinking at that level if we expect to see the results. Yeah. And, and there were friends in my life that love me and I am their friend and I'm still their friend, but I could tell they were not able to carry the load and the weight of what that circumstance was. And so I had to put some distance in that, in that season of my life from being able to share with them what was going on because their response to me was, was not encouraging my faith. It was causing fear or pain. And so I just had to, to not, tell them all that I was dealing with. I, I had, even though they were friends of mine, I had to learn, I can't tell them what's going on because I don't, I don't want to hear a natural response. Mm -hmm. So I had to determine to, to, to limit my conversations about what I talked, who I talked to and the way I talked to them and only really share the depth of this problem with people who understood how to walk in faith. 
That's huge, Candace. That is huge. Mm. Oh my goodness. Well, we're getting close on time, Karen. Is there any last words that you want to share with um, with parents uh, who are dealing with this very difficult situation that we haven't already covered? Anything that God put on your heart? Well, one of the scriptures that I love so much, and I feel like someone watching it can hear this from the spirit. God gave me this promise on a day that it was horrible. And um, I was up praying in the morning hours. Lindsay was gone. And I get a text on my phone. And it was from a spiritual son. And he just said, he said, I. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Wait, she's going to come back and she's going to tell you what we said. OK, just wait. Just here she comes. OK, good. <laughs> I get a text on my phone and my spiritual son said, I feel to send you this this morning. It's Isaiah 49, 24 and 25. And this is the promise. And I feel it when I say it right now. It says the captive of the warrior will be released. The plunder of the tyrant will be retrieved for I will fight those that fight you and I will save your children. And Candace, I heard that like I'd gotten a letter from heaven, a text from heaven. I grabbed that word and I believed it. Two hours, a few hours later, I was just plummeted into circumstance. And I, I found out about Lindsay. I was so discouraged that same day, the same day. And just a few hours later on the same day, I get another text from someone who had no idea of that early morning text mm -hmm. or what I was dealing with. And she said to me, another, it was a lady this time. She said, I felt to send you this, Isaiah 49, 24 and 25. The captive of the warrior will be released. The plunder of the tyrant will be retrieved. For I will fight those that fight you and save your children. And Candace, I believe that's a word for someone watching today to decree over their life. And listen to the beauty of this promise. The captive of the warrior will be released. The plunder of the tyrant will be retrieved. Their marriage will be retrieved. Your marriage will be retrieved. Everything the enemy stolen from you will be retrieved. And I love this. I will fight those that fight you. That means God is your defender. That means, listen, when God is fighting for you, it's a sure victory, period. And I love the last word. I will save your children. That is a promise from God. He will save your children. So cling to that today. Go write it on a piece of paper. Tape it on your refrigerator. Put it on the dashboard of your car. Put it on the window above your sink. I'm, whatever you've got to do. Isaiah 49, 24, 25. Get that word into your spirit and decree it every day. That is your promise in Jesus' name. Oh, wow. Wow. I, I just feel, feel the in this, in this place. place. I want us to intercede for a couple of minutes for, for some people who need people like you and I to stand with them. So let's just take a couple of minutes to intercede before we close down. And then I'll make a few announcements, let people know where they can get your book and all that. But let's just go into intercession for them. And those of you who are watching online right now, or if you watch later on demand, I want you to enter into that space with Karen and I right now, okay? Because because God is timeless, okay? Space and time are not the same to him as they are to us. And so when, when you watch this video at any time, you can enter in to the space and the place of the anointing of God and bringing heaven to earth. So let's go into that place for these people. Karen, why don't you start? Amen. Father, we give you praise that you are a present help in the time of trouble. You are not far away, but you are near. And I pray for every man and woman watching this broadcast at this moment. I declare strength into you in Jesus name. I declare clear focus that you will be able to focus on the word of God without being so distracted by the circumstances and the storm around you in Jesus name. Father, I thank you for the promise of your word in Ezekiel that says you will take the hard and stony and stubborn heart and you will make it a tender heart, a heart of flesh that is responsive to your word. Lord, I'm agreeing with my brothers and sisters right now in Jesus name that you are moving on the hearts of their loved ones. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I declare full restoration for them of everything the enemy has taken from them in Jesus name, in Jesus name. I know this is odd, but I keep hearing 
uh, the name Candace. I know your name is Candace, but another Candace that's watching, another Candace that's watching in Jesus name that the Lord is telling you that he is seeing you. He's seen your tears. He's seen the struggle and he is coming through for you today as a day of breakthrough. I declare over you what God said to David when David had, when Ziglag was destroyed, you will surely recover everything that was taken from you. In Jesus name, you will surely recover everything that was taken from you in the name of Jesus. We agree for that. We agree for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, that Karen and I speak at a level of regional authority, God. And we thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you are breaking strongholds over people's lives. We have experienced this ourselves, Father, and we know the pain of the prodigal. And so we're asking you right now in the name of Jesus, Father, to bring home those who have walked away, Father, who have turned their hearts away. Father, we, we thank you right now that you will begin to send them people that will speak to them to go home, to, to have your life restored, to return back to the place that loves you, that has arms open wide for you, God. We thank you, Lord, that we are all prodigals to you, Father, and you have kept your arms open wide to us to receive us at any time, Father. If anyone is watching today and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he sees you as the prodigal, but he is ready to kill the fatted calf for your return. He knows He knows you. He knows where you're at. He knows what you're doing, and he wants you to come home. And for those moms and dads who have children in that way, he knows the same thing. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord. I, I ask for a clarion call right now from heaven to come forth to draw home the prodigals in this harvest season. Begin to call them back to want to know you, God, to know who you are, Lord, to know your love, God, that you are not the God of condemnation, that you are not a God of judgment, but you are the God who loves us, who sent your son to take care of what we couldn't take care of ourselves. I thank you, Father. Lord, I ask you to fill those with the Holy Spirit that are watching the program right now, God. They need to be filled with power to sustain and continue to pray and to have that level of faith and not to quit, Father. We thank you, Lord, that when we come together, we gather together in your name, two or more of us, and we stand in faith, you will return to us the very thing that you want us to have, God, the thing that you gave us stewardship over, which is, is these relationships, Father, to cultivate and to grow. And so we thank you, Father, for, for calling home the prodigals now in the name of Jesus. I also call home marriages, any separation yes. in marriages right now, God, wherever there's been adultery, Father, or, or wherever there's been um, other types of actions that have created a division of trust, Lord Jesus, I ask for there to be a place of restoration, God, that, that restoring would begin to take place, Father, that, that that two people would begin to know that things are deeper than just what's taking place around them, that, that they would remember covenant and they will come back to covenant, Father. Mm -hmm. You never forget us. No matter how adulterous we are as a people, your hands are always there to draw us close and bring us back and to tell us that you forgive us and you want to be in relationship with us. And so I ask the same thing for married couples today. We do a clarion call for marriages in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And I, and I hear this word over someone right now. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as mm. eagles. They shall run and not be weary, walk and not faint. New strength in you in Jesus name. Strength in you for the wait. And I love I love what Bob Sorge says about waiting. He said, waiting is not passive. It is doing everything that you know to do to stay in faith. That means it is violent. Waiting on the Lord is not just sitting here waiting, doing nothing. No, it's fasting. It's praying. It's decreeing the word. It's having your eyes set with expectancy on your God. So set your eyes and keep contending in the heavens. And God's going to break through for you in Jesus name. Mm. Amen. Amen. This is powerful. Wow. Woo. Well, we're going to close it down and just a couple of, of announcements to let you all know. Um, you can reach Karen at KarenWheaton.com. And so I want you to have the opportunity to go there and to uh, reach out to her for sure. Um, she is also the founder uh, of The Ramp. 
uh, School of Ministry and the Ramp churches, and and they're all over. And so go to the ramp.org as well and find out um, how you might be able to get involved in the ramp in your local city. I know right here we are going to be having the ramp come to Florida, uh, to Orange Park, Florida, the very first visit of the ramp to a Florida location. She's bringing Chosen, um, which is the dance team of, of youth and young adults. And so we're so excited September 14th and 15th to have Karen come and bring the ramp here. If you want to come and join us wherever you're at in the United States or abroad, you just get yourself a plane ticket and come on out here for this two-day event and go to the ramp.org slash Florida and you can register there. There's a very small registration fee um, to just come on out and receive. I know it's going to be anointed. I know it's going to be power packed. I know there's going to be salvations, healings, um, restoration. Kids are going to get on fire for God. Their destiny is going to be set forth. If you've got a young person, you got to bring them. Bring your youth groups. It's going to be an amazing time. Share this with some people that you know in Florida, no matter where you're at, and say, hey, you need to go to this thing. And you can just go and sign up at theramp.org slash Florida. So we are excited about that. I want you to buy Karen's book, Watching the Road. I don't know if you all can see it right here. Watching the Road, you need to go to, Karen, where can they find this at? Watchingtheroad.com. Watchingtheroad.com. Right. Of course, Amazon has it too. But Watching the Road, it's my story of my two-year journey of intercession for Lindsay. And uh, it's, it's, it's written to give encouragement to anybody facing an impossible situation, not just for prodigal's return, but also for anyone believing for something that looks impossible. And the book, I believe, will speak faith to their hearts. And by all means, get to Florida. because And it's not just for young people. It's for hungry people. And oh. <laughs> she cut off. That's okay. She'll be back in just a second. We'll have her finish it what she's saying about the ramp, because we want you all change to come. Your life. <laughs> it will change your life. So whatever it takes, get to Florida and do whatever it takes to get there. Amen. Amen. And then Karen and I are going to be speaking in um, October at the Women on the Front Lines in Trumbull, Texas with Joan Hunter. Yes. So we'd love to have you go to joanhunter.org and register there if you would like to see Karen and I, Joan Hunter, Patricia King, Melody Barker, um, uh, Charity Bradshaw. There's going to be a lot of different speakers that are going to be there, but it's going to be three days of just filling yourself up at Women on the Front Lines. And Trumbull, Texas is near Houston. So if you've got some friends that are near Houston, you need to register and come out to that um, event as well. I just want to share with you all that I have an MP3 file uh, called Prayers That Rock Heaven. And if you're interested in that particular resource, uh, you can just go to candacesmithman.com or you can click down in the comment section. It should be down there in the comment section as well. And we'll have Karen, um, we'll put some stuff down there in the comment section too, her staff will, so you can find her book and other information on the ramp as well. But that MP3 file, um, that, that would be great if you all would be interested in learning more about prayers that rock heaven and that would help support the glory road television show i also um in order to support the ministry um am a skincare specialist and i um have uh, partnered with rodan and fields and so if you are interested in any skincare rosacea psoriasis acne wrinkles the whole mitt I got you covered and it would help support the Glory Road television show. So I would like to bless you with that. So just comment in the sections below and, and put hashtag healing, hashtag healing. That will pick it up for me today. And then I will come to you and find out what kind of skincare you might need. All right. It's wonderful to have you all come join us today. And um, Karen's going to be with us in September and I'm going to see her in October. So make sure you go online and um, reach out to both of us, our ministries, and we'd be happy to pray with you also and to stand with you on bringing your prodigal home. Remember, there's a glory road and you're on it straight to his throne. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.